In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate standing postural exam. This exam can be used as a preliminary assessment to determine any obvious areas of asymmetry, and that can point us towards uh, further diagnosis and potential treatment of particular body regions. Two important elements of this exam, we're going to want to have our patient in bare feet or in socks, and we're also going to want to make sure anytime we're assessing any asymmetry, that we are positioning our dominant eye at the relative midline of the patient. And while in practice that would mean that I would be standing in this position, for this demonstration I'll be standing a little bit more off to the side uh, for better visualization. As I work through this demonstration, I'm going to be touching a few different areas from your head to your shoulders, along your ribs, your pelvis, down the back of your legs, down to your feet and ankles. Uh, let me know if anything is uncomfortable or tender. If you need me to stop or change what I'm doing, uh, please let me know and I'll stop at any time. Do I have your permission to begin? Yes. All right. So we're going to begin with a posterior view of the patient. So go ahead and turn away. So starting from the posterior aspect, we're going to be evaluating the mastoid processes. Now as we're assessing symmetry of each of these areas, we're going to want to do our best to create horizontal lines with our fingers so that we can better assess the heights of each of the landmarks. So for mastoid processes, we're going to put either our middle fingers underneath them or our index fingers or our thumbs underneath them and we're going to create a relative horizontal line so that we can gauge the relative position of each of the landmarks. So I'm going to use my middle fingers in this case. And then our next landmark is going to be the acromion processes. We're going to put our fingers on top of the acromion and try to create a relative line again. Our next landmark is going to be the inferior angle of the scapula. We're going to follow the medial border of the scapula bilaterally and find the inferior angle. Then we're going to place our thumbs underneath, hook under the inferior angles, and create a relatively horizontal plane so that we can compare the heights of each of the inferior angles. We can then observe general spinal curvature, any obvious asymmetry, side bending, rotation, positioning. We can then move to the iliac crest. So we can find the iliac crest by finding the soft space between the top of the pelvis and the bottom of the rib cage. We can put our hands along the top of the pelvis and then roll our fingers into that soft space with our thumbs uh, horizontal. And then we can press down to ensure that we're on the iliac crest. And then we can gauge the heights of the iliac crest by looking at our thumbs and in our hand position. We can then move to the greater trochanter. So from iliac crest, sliding down along the lateral aspect of the hip until we reach the superior aspect of the greater trochanter. And then we can put our hands on the superior aspect, try to create a relatively horizontal plane to observe. If we're having difficulty finding the greater trochanter on either side, we can have our patient uh, stick out their leg and internally and externally rotate it. Can you stick this leg out and uh, turn it in and out? And we can feel the greater trochanter in that space. Once we've identified it on both sides, we can create that horizontal plane and then compare the heights of each of those landmarks. We can then move down and observe the knee and any femur tibia angulation that may be present. We want to observe whether there's a relative valgus or varus positioning of the knee. We can also move down and observe the calcaneus and the Achilles tendon. We can observe and feel for the thickness of the Achilles tendon. We can also observe the calcaneus for any eversion or inversion relative positioning. We're now going to observe our patient from a lateral view, so go ahead and turn to your left. We're going to begin by evaluating the anterior posterior spinal curvatures, starting from the cervical spine and observing its lordosis, the thoracic spine and its kyphosis, the lumbar spine and its lordosis, and then the sacrum and its kyphosis. And we'll be able to observe different amounts of that positioning based on our patient's body habitus and clothing that they're wearing at the time. And for each of those AP curves, we're going to want to observe whether it's relatively normal, whether it's increased, so an increased lordosis, or a decreased lordosis in the cervical spine, and so on down the spine. The next thing we're going to evaluate from a lateral view is the gravitational line. So if we took a straight vertical line or a plumb line and hung it above our patient, that straight line should pass through the external auditory meatus, the head of the humerus. We could estimate that it would pass through the uh, vertebral body of the third lumbar vertebra. Also, it would pass through the anterior third of the sacrum. It would also pass through the greater trochanter, through the lateral femoral condyle, and then through the lateral malleolus. And we can gauge each of the body regions 
and their relative position to the other to just observe any obvious asymmetry. Our last view is the anterior view, so can you turn to your left? We're going to begin by observing facial symmetry, so we can observe uh, relative eye heights, eyebrow heights, nose position, cheekbone position, uh, jawline and uh, chin position. We can also look at the uh, overall head and neck position if there's any obvious side bending or rotation. We can also look again at the shoulder girdle and observe the acromion and the clavicles and we can potentially measure them by putting our hands on the acromions and our hands on the clavicles and gauging the relative positions of them. We can then move down and observe the thoracic cage rotation and it may be visually obvious or we can put our hands on the lower part of the thoracic cage and observe and feel whether there's any obvious rotation or side bending towards one side or the other. We can then move down to the uh, pelvis and we can appreciate any lumbopelvic rotation. So again, making our contact on the lateral aspect of the pelvis with our thenar eminences near where the anterior superior iliac spines are, we can feel the relative position of the pelvis. And then we can move down and observe the arches of the foot and determine whether there's any obvious pes planus or cavus positioning. If it's difficult to see, we can also put our fingers underneath the arch and see how much space is taken up on each side. 